So what is a tool? A tool is a device or implement, especially one held in the hand, used to carry out a particular function, quote unquote, gardening tools. Now, there's a whole reason why I decided to start the video off this way. Hear me out. This right here is a DJI Pocket 3. I've seen a lot of people do reviews on it. They go really crazy and technical into the specs and you know what it's capable of and just all the nitty gritty details of what is packed into this little device. And don't get me wrong, it's phenomenal, but I think people forget the most important thing, that this right here is simply a tool. Let me switch cameras and explain my justification. So first and foremost, let's address the elephant in the room, which is this DJI Osmo does not replace this. This is a Sony FX3. It is a full frame video dedicated camera. This is my go-to camera for like everything I do that's video related. Don't get me wrong, this camera has a lot of really cool features. This is by no means a video camera that you bring to a professional shoot as your primary camera. If you showed up to a wedding shoot or a professional shoot and was like, hey, this is what I came to shoot the event with, right off the bat, they're probably gonna look at you like, man, I should have just shot this with my cell phone. <laughs> Which brings me to point number two. The footage is almost equivalent to that of a cell phone, if not just a hinge better. Your cell phone is probably still your best tool for photo and video. And so far, I think that the video quality, again, is not that much better than a cell phone. I think it looks pretty good, but by no means does it look like my FX3 and all my lenses attached to it. So just keep that in mind that this camera is nowhere near a professional video camera. But that doesn't mean you can't make really cool video content with it. At the end of the day, it goes back to my original saying, this and all these gear and all this equipment that we have is nothing but tools. Don't let the specs fool you. At the end of the day, it really comes down to your creativity, how much fun you're having, and what you're doing with it. Because if you got a camera that shoots 8K, 120 FPS, and you got like 10, $8,000 lenses, and you aren't shooting any with it, kind of like me on my down days, <laughs> then it's really all just specs on a sheet and completely pointless. I, I just wanted to get one more thing out there that I think is extremely important, which is lenses. This has one camera lens on it. It's a super wide lens. I'd have to look at the manual to get the exact numbers, but it's pretty wide as you can see right here. Like if I back up, you can almost see the entire corner of my studio over here. It basically has this one wide lens on it and you can only put another adapter to make it go wider. And if you wanna zoom in, it's a digital zoom, which means you lose a lot of your picture quality when you start tapping in. So you might wanna just shoot at its regular focal point right now and then do a lot of your zooming on post but do note that when you start editing that down in post it's gonna start looking pixelated and you're gonna lose some of the quality even if you shoot in 4k24 so remember when you buy a camera camera bodies with lenses equal the footage you want to get there's no one all ends all type of lenses everything has a characteristic to it everything has a story to it everything has a purpose the dji 3 in my opinion serves this particular purpose which is being my camera person <laughs> what the heck what is casting this shadow give me one second let me fix the shadow okay all right oops subject lost god i love that how i just disappear and it can fix me like that one thing to note that i will bring up is this active track does have a limit it's not a full 360 turn it's only 180 which means it stops left and it stops right it doesn't do the full circle so as you can see the minute i go over here and i go off camera it's not going any further and it actually loses the active auto track for a little bit so if you want to do like a full 360 you'll still have to uh treat it like a vlog and rotate the camera while i'm adjusting the light what I was initially saying was, I think that this camera is freaking awesome if you need a camera person and you're like me where you don't have a camera person around. Ah, look at how cinematic that is with my giant light dome here. 
<laughs> As I was saying, this camera is freaking awesome. If you don't have a camera person, you don't feel like setting up a big ass camera rig. I think this is pretty good. Um, it's also awesome if you don't want to dedicate your cell phone to being your backup camera or your primary camera Because I don't know about you guys, but I like having my phone near with me whenever I want to text I want to call I want to game. I want to ignore people That's what I want to use my cell phone for not to do b-roll work So this to me is my substitute camera person whenever I don't have a camera person around which is usually 90% of the time because my friends got better things to do than follow me around all the time. <laughs> now I know throughout this video, I sound like I've been talking a lot of trash about this camera, but I wanna back up a little bit and just say that this camera has been probably the funnest piece of tool that I have played with in a long time. And that's saying a lot coming from somebody who's got a whole studio where I constantly screw around quite a bit. I shoot with an a7 IV, I have an FX3, I have a few Amaran lights in here, I got a nice little light dome. I got a lot of little tools and gadgets. This camera has been so awesome that I actually stopped playing video games and have been learning how to mess with it more. Sometimes I'll just go on a walk and start recording or I'll just randomly just go through the menu to start playing with it. Like that's how much fun I'm having with this. I have never had the luxury of shooting something like this where I can move around and just have a camera actively track what I'm doing. It shoots 4K 24 H-Log, which means I can put this back into Premiere and edit it and color grade it whichever way I want and have a lot more data to play with, which is pretty cool for something with a one inch sensor that's this tiny. DJI has always been killing it. I'm using the microphone right now, all rigged up to myself to talk right now. And so far, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. I became a fan of DJI ever since I bought their wireless microphone system, which I think is the best microphone system ever. I wish it was around when I was doing weddings. It would have been a very handy tool to have. So, you know, the minute I bought the DJI microphones, I just knew that this company is gonna be putting out some cool, innovative stuff. I think that if you're looking for something simple to use to record strictly video, the DJI Pocket Mobile 3 is a clear winner. I think it's great for general consumers. I think it's just great in general if you want to have fun just recording video and not having to use your cell phone and because this was not sponsored I'm giving you guys a hard honest review of what I would be using it for I have never been a vlogger but this camera makes me actually want to go out and vlog just because it's so fun to use it's so easy to use and it's so pocketable it literally fits in my pocket in conclusion I think this camera is worth every penny I think it's worth the hype but I also don't think it replaces a traditional DSLR and I also don't think it's replacing a professional video camera I hope you guys found this video helpful I bought this with my own hard-earned money and I'm using it daily as a part of my studio hustle so please do hit like, please do hit subscribe as it helps me build out this channel and continually build out the studio. So hopefully I don't have this much clutter going on in the future. Thank you all for watching this video. And until next time, this has been a pleasure and I'm out. Peace.